Good morning. I'm Leonard Hamlin, Canon Missioner of the Washington National Cathedral. And it is a joy as well as a pleasure for me to meet you on this Tuesday morning, July 11th. I'm thankful on behalf of my dean as well as all of my colleagues uh, to welcome you into this moment that we might set aside time for our devotions as well as prayer. So won't you join me on this day in a word of prayer. Almighty God, we come once again so ever grateful for who you are, grateful for your love towards us, your presence with us. We are thankful for the day that you have set before us. And now we pray, even as heaven is declaring your glory, that through our living, through our relationships, and all that we do, we might declare your glory as well. So we ask your blessings upon us. This we ask. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I invite you on this morning to join me as we hear the reading of the gospel that comes to us out of Matthew, the ninth chapter, the 32nd through the 38th verses. And in Matthew's gospel, we find these words. While they were going out, a man who was demon possessed and could not talk was brought to Jesus. And when the demon was driven out, the man who had been made who had been mute, he spoke. The crowd was amazed and said, nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. But the Pharisees says, it is by the prince of demons that he drives out demons. Jesus went through all the towns and the villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Amen. Certainly, there are moments in every one of our lives and days where our lives are filled with questions. Perhaps on today, I'm wrestling with a particular question that gets lifted so often and we take for granted. And I invite you to join me in wrestling with this question on this day by asking you, what are you asking for? Each day, if not every day, we wake up, we move through life seeking for something or asking for something. If it is not generated from within us, it may be posed and often is posed from outside of us. How many times have you ever been asked, what would you like to do today? How many times have you heard someone come to you and ask, what would you like to eat today? Perhaps it didn't come in that form, but maybe someone said to you, what is it you would like to achieve, accomplish, experience, become, travel, or simply desire? I could make a list that would go on and on of questions that perhaps come to us uh, and perhaps reveal our heart's desires. But often at times our heart's desire is rooted in satisfying temporary desires, satisfying or experiencing momentary satisfactions. Today the question before me, and I invite you to join me in wrestling with this question that comes to us really, and rises up out of the passage that has been read by simply asking you, what are you asking for today? We gather this morning with reflections and prayer, and there are many voices that will focus on the components of prayer and help us to really see the different parts of prayer, the different ways of praying. Many of them are, are different, but similar and essentially the same as they would often say that the components of prayer are faith, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. Supplication being, of course, that we're asking for something. While we don't 
have enough time on this morning to walk through every component. When I listen to prayers, and oftentimes when we're motivated to pray, our prayers are weighted heavily on the asking portion. It is true, though, this morning, that there are times that we have not because we ask not. It is true, and we're told that there are times that we should ask and we will receive. But sooner or later, we must wrestle with, in our asking, what are we really asking for? Jesus sees the people in need in this moment. He looks at the world in which he's living, moving, breathing, and experiencing. And out of compassion, he concludes, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. On this morning, maybe we're the ones who are looking at the world in which we're living. Maybe we're the ones who are conscious of all that we're moving and passing. Maybe we're the ones on this, on this day and in this moment who are recognizing so much that is going on with the world. Perhaps we are thinking about and should be thinking about those who are suffering and need, those who are searching and lacking, those who are caught between the, the wonderful, sometimes characteristic that is used or painting that is talked about that says, when your life is between a rock and a hard place. And maybe it's the us who are standing and perhaps having compassion. But in that moment, Jesus tells them, as he looks at his disciples, he says, pray. And when you pray, ask the Lord of the harvest to send the workers into the harvest field. Perhaps their request could have been put this way and missed the point. Lord, just send the harvest and forget about the workers. In other words, that our prayer is, Lord, you do the work and let us sit back. Lord, you handle the hard part and let us just reap the benefits. Lord, just send the harvest so that the workers can enjoy, or those who aren't working can enjoy the benefit. Jesus tells them, and he's telling us today, pray, Lord, send the workers. Well, when we're praying today, will we pray that the workers would be us? That we're not asking the Lord to do for us what he's given us the power to do for ourselves. And maybe we ought to wrestle with the truth. That some of what we're dealing with in the world today is because we haven't done the work that he's called us to do. So today, whether it's in your home, your family, your communities, whether it's from right where your feet are planted because you have reach around the world, will we be the workers that in days to come, the harvest will even be greater than what is present right now? Amen. I invite you to join me in the prayer that the Lord taught his disciples to pray, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. On this day, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious unto you. And may the Lord's countenance rest upon you and give you peace. Amen.